Welcome to the foundation for the study of cycles. My name is Lars Fontine and we meet here once a week on Monday, same time, same place to have a discussion about cycle analysis. So up front, um, this is not a live session. Usually we will do this session live to get your feedback and a chance to interact together. As I take three weeks off with my family, this will be pre-recorded session today and the next two weeks. Um, so uh, I hope to uh, meet you back soon. So, but however, um, the session will continue. And um, for today, so today is Friday, so you will use this on Monday. So I'm just recording this on, on Friday with latest data. I want to review with you sentiment cycles, yeah, to analyze a little bit the, what's the perspective on sentiment cycles. That's the topic for today. So join me uh, for the next 15 to 20 minutes. I will review the volatility index and the Federal Reserve Bank St. Louis Financial Stress Index on a weekly scale. So and put these two indices together from a cyclic perspective to see what cycles from a sentiment perspective might tell us for the weeks to come. So that's the topic for today and um, let's get into it. So um, if we start to look on our cycle scanner, um, I will start with the daily analysis of the um, volatility index. So what you will see here now on the chart is the um, volatility index, so the, the VIX index um, of the S&P 500 as a data set. So I've pulled up the, just the volatility data um, and did basic cycle analysis. So let's start here right from the sketch. Once you have loaded this data, you see now the volatility is coming down, but fluctuating right now. So the uh, cycles in our cycle scanner show us a clear peak here at a length of um, 173 days um, in the volatility index. And then we could add the second peak here, which is from the battle score, not as good as the first one, but these would be the two ones from the spectrum analysis, which you could pick to do the analysis. So if we add these cycles to our um, main index here, so this is the larger one with a good strength, which shows up in the spectrum. So we will add this here to the mix and we will just have a quick view how these um, cycle tops and bottoms align to the current past. So I will just highlight this here. So this top here, so we have this from top to low, top to, this is the high, this is the low just aligning the cycle bottoms with the uh, cycle tops here um, to see just um, as the amplitude is not what we are looking for. We are looking for timing here, which at least it's quite nicely aligned to major. Uh, so here's a double top, which is then aligned here and then into this bottoming period where we are right now. So a bottom in the uh, sentiment indices um, always refers to market top. So the reading is vice versa to main market data. That's the daily perspective. And um, if we just remove our drawing here, so um, that, yeah, there might be, and cycle is a little bit turning up, so we might see an interim, as we are st in a strong uptrend anyhow, so we might see a sideways move, sideways move or down move now into August. So for the next two to three weeks, it's a little bit mixed sideways to downwards. And then it suggests from a sentiment perspective that fear will go down, which then would correspond end to a, to a topping or a sentiment top uh, or low market top in November this year. So this would be in pair uh, with a market rally up to the end of the year. That's the daily cycles. Um, and I will now add the weekly perspective. And to use the um, weekly perspective, we will switch to the financial stress index. Um, but before doing this, we can do even more complicated topics. So we can add the cycle with the length of 73 here, um, which, is, which is the second one here, which stands out. And maybe if we like, then if we have a view on the harmonics of cycles, 
if we look to the most dominant cycle here with a length of 173. It has an harmonic relation to the next cycle or to the length of 60 days. So we could add this into the mix to yeah, fine tune a little bit our analysis. You see also from uh, past movements, it's nicely aligned. And the major takeaway does not change here. So that's important also to review this um, change. So there might be, an, yeah, but this, this is more sideways move or um, topping market between October and November. That's the same reading we had from the most dominant cycle. And I think it's aligned here to the 27th of November now from the daily perspective. Um, be before I move now to the, to the weekly cycles, what are, what's always interesting if you map this volatility cycle to the main S&P market index, not, not only to align the past highs and lows to the volatility index, also to cross validate on the price chart. Yeah, if these tops and bottoms and volatility can be seen also on the price chart, because that's maybe what you're more interested in. So therefore, I will do a short uh, um, side note to show you um, just how I'm doing this, but you can do this in, in any charting application. Uh, I'm just using, or I like to quickly switch over to, uh, for example, TradingView, where you can do quick uh, a chart analysis. And what you see here is I've just pulled over the composite cycle now here on a plot on TradingView um, to cross validate quickly uh, the cycles here. It's, it's plotted vice versa. So you see the same cycle, just not a cyclic view. It's just kind of vector plot because it's just plotting the uh, when the cycles turn. Yeah? So the, the other symbols are just shown as lines here. And you can, you can see this. So this top here on the um, 27th of uh, November yeah, is exactly the same as here. What you see here in this cycle here is the 27th of uh, November here down below. And then it goes here into the expected sentiment top market low on the 22nd of August, um, which is exactly here, the 22nd of August. It's just shown vice versa because the sentiment top, which would uh, be equal to a market bottom in the main markets. Yeah. So this is the uh, forecast here, just shown slightly different. And this is now also the historical view um, shown on the price chart here, so not on the sentiment. And now you can do the uh, yeah, same cross check here. So here's the high. So here's the high in the market. So then moving down from into into this low here and this low here. So this was the then here we had the top, which is here, then moving up. And then into here we had the bottom, which is aligned to this situation here, then the run up into yeah, at least finally here, this catching this top here. And then with this low here in the sentiment low. So exactly here, then the run up here to this top, yeah, the sentiment cycle. And then we had, yeah, the this down move here was yeah, sideways upwards, where we suggested the first top now already here. Uh, and then the uh, second top here in July, which was this up move here. So now we are coming into the forecast period. Uh, just want to hide it here. So this is now the forecast period where we would expect a, a drop into mid August or as past drops more and more sideways move. And then maybe a final upswing here um, from here into the November period. So this is the, the daily reading and you see from the past that the sentiment cycles aligned more or less perfectly with the price chart. So that's, that's the important point I also want to make here that we are looking for timing points, are, are not, not price amplitude movements here. And now it's interesting as we have plotted a sentiment cycle just in regards to the timing on top of a price chart here, including the um, forecast period. Okay, so now let's do the same analysis with um, a weekly sentiment data set. And to use a weekly sentiment data set, I will now switch to the um, St. Louis uh, Financial Stress Index. 
which is reported weekly by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. They put, I think, up to 18 different sentiment measures into the mix to calculate their sentiment index um, and then report this value weekly. And this is similar to the volatility index. It explains a little bit the stress or the fear in the market or the, the financial risk, um, which is currently aligned. And this index can also be plotted with the cycle scanner, which I have just uploaded here in the right upper corner. You can load this data into your, into your own cycle uh, analyzer and doing the uh, basic analysis. So this is the index data, which we see here now. Um, and here it's also interesting. This is now weekly cycles, not daily cycles. There's a clear peak in the cycle analysis spectrum, which is always interesting. And that's in this case, it's 197 weeks. So let's pull up this cycle here um, on the chart, which is a longer cycle than the daily cycles we're talking about. So this is a much longer perspective here from the cycles perspective going back into the year of 2005. So this is 15, 16 years of um, cycle analysis now on the weekly data set. And you see clearly uh, also here on this picture that a past cycle tops and bottoms here um, have been nicely aligned with the um, tops and bottoms in the volatility index here on this cycle. So what we currently expect here is what I'm currently marking here, which is an upcoming sentiment low right around the corner or right in front of us. Um, and the sentiment low here on the weekly cycle, which also then correspondent to an expected market top in the main markets. So therefore it's interesting. Now, now we have a longer term cycle perspective on top of the daily sentiment perspective we did with the volatility cycle analysis, right? So we can now also have here the forecast horizon, which um, from the cycle perspective shows us or indicates us a dominant cycle low for the weekly stress cycle in November. Um, and then changing into a, a, a rising period, which, which would be corresponding to downwards moving um, main markets. So, and now we can pull this weekly cycle also on the price chart to see how the longer term cycle reference. This is the same I did as with the daily cycle. So you switch over to your favorite charting application or whatever, and pull just the timing indications you derive from this cycle analysis on your price chart. So I've done the same. So this was the uh, daily view. Um, and I will now add the uh, weekly cycle view here, which is uh, now pulling over the same timing information from the analysis we did. So this is indicated here for 19th uh, November, uh, yeah, which is here. Yeah, not. I think I pulled up some quietly different data, but but at least um, it's 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 a weekly data here. So that's the no, it's the 19th, right? Yeah. So here's the 19th. So the exact bottom is the 19th. So it's just the you, you need to be careful with uh, moving on the weekly scale. So the 19th of November is projected here as a low, while the top was here to be exact in uh, 27th December 19 um, and doing the same here on the chart. So this is 27th December 19 and now vice versa expecting the top here. And you can also align this if we uh, drill back here to a weekly chart um, to see the past alignment of, of these cycles here um, on the S&P price chart. So you see that at least uh, in, in the past it was also able, yeah, we need to go much more further into the past, um, but you see here, it, at least we are approaching this uh, next top here. And now the key point in cycle analysis is always um, to do a cycles within cycles approach, which means now we layer the daily cycle and the weekly cycle on top of each other, which for example, can be done here, um, which gets to an interesting point in time. And that's the reason I want to highlight that because if you now see where the tops get in synchrony, so the synchrony of cycles, this is where tops of different 
datas and different cycles get into alignment is the period in November here. So from October, no November, um, yeah, so this area here, this is where the sentiment cycle of the volatility index, which projects a major tie, gets into alignment with the longer term cycle from the weekly stress index, which also suggests a turn in November. So that's the kind of topic I wanted to bring across for today. Um, and also a way how you should switch between cycle analysis on sentiment data and then bring over the timing information which you get from your cycle analysis to whatever charting or, or technique anal analysis you use because the cycles give you a clue about timing information on whatever assets you are you're then finally trading or looking for a forecast. For sure, you never trade these uh, cycle projections here. So you always uh, need to closely monitor price behavior and technical and market conditions at this point in time. But it gives you a, a possible window in the future where to have a closer look on the key markets based on sentiment analysis. Okay, so I hope you liked a little bit to drill into sentiment data sets. Um, please repeat this procedure with the cycle analyzer on your own to get comfortable with also volatility fear cycles and sentiment cycles where I recommend the financial stress index from the St. Louis Fed index and always try then to map weekly and daily cycles on your asset analysis to see the behavior on the price chart. That's it for today. For the next two weeks, I have already prepared some content for you. So please excuse that I'm not able to get into a live interaction today and for the next two sessions, but I would like to welcome you back in the live session by end of August when I will be back and we'll have a live discussion and live chat with you for cycle analysis and what's there to come. Thanks for joining me today. Have a nice week um, and see you soon. Bye.